you know, I know some conversations are private. You told us that, uh, you know, last week when you and um, Nico was joking around, but can you tell us what happened uh, with Ronnie McGruger in the tunnel? I know you were laughing about it after the fact. I have, I have no idea. Juan T holding it down for our team. That's all I really know. Um, I was late to the party. Steph Kendra Andrews, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve Kerr was talking about how when you guys do well on the boards, it's a sign of focus. Do you agree with that? And what else does rebounding well mean for you and the team? It fuels our offense, obviously, and it allows us to gain some momentum, um, especially early in games. He mentioned something about uh, our field goal percentage uh, defense and it being pretty solid. Um, but then you give up offensive rebounds and it's kind of a, a wash. So um, we have capable ball handlers that can push and transition once you get a rebound. And, and obviously, uh, you know, defense isn't allowed to get their, you know, get set and be able to uh, get a good flow. And and at, at the end of the day, it, you know, lessens their, the other team's confidence knowing that we're going to try to, you know, make them take tough shots and then I'll, they're only going to get one shot at it and you can keep it moving. So, um, you know, we do have some small lineups out there at times and it requires everybody to, to gang rebound, be physical. Sometimes you have to box out, not expecting to get the rebound yourself, but to help somebody else, you know, or just keep somebody off the glass and you do your job there. So it, it it's a commitment thing as well uh, to be physical. I just wanted to follow up on one of the questions that Clay asked you post game. Uh, do you think it would be 40 or 41 games until you pass Rayon? <laughs> Let's see. I'd have to make a uh, quick math. What's that? Nine a game or something like that? Ten a game. Uh, yeah. Ten a game. Yeah. Hey, anything's possible, right? So maybe maybe forty one. I'd take the over though if I was if I were a betting man. Stephen Draymond was saying that he feels like he's a couple of weeks away from being where he wants to be. You've been around him for a long time. Are you able to see him coming from where he was the first couple of weeks? For sure, every game moving in the right direction. I mean, we're all at what, six weeks into the season. It's still kind of weird talking about what the vibe was, you know, week one, week two, where it was short training camp and him coming off, uh, you know, what, 14 days off, uh, you know, just sitting and away from the team. So it's all new territory for everybody, especially him. Um, but you see the aggressiveness, um, you know, the sharpness of on offense, you know, being able to playmaker, obviously defensively putting together amazing, you know, uh, runs out there and making his presence felt. So I take him for his word, I guess, in terms of where he, where he, where he thinks he's at and, and where he, uh, where he's trying to get to pretty soon. Steph, over the last um, maybe nine or 10 games, your percentages are about where they normally are, 50% from the field, 45% from three. Uh, is that is that because you figure, you know, how these quote-unquote janky defenses are guarding you? You kind of got the pictures? It's getting better for sure. And I think as, I mean, we have a lot of ups and downs of the team um, in terms of what we're trying to do execution-wise, but it follows my normal patterns of, you know, shooting better as the season goes on just in general, um, but definitely getting a lot more comfortable finding that balance, um, knowing what type of shots we're going to get and ones that I can take and make. And obviously, I don't ever lose confidence in that respect, but uh, you start to get a flow and you can carry that from game to game and it starts to feel really good. And I'm probably going to try, I'm not jinxing myself. So thanks for asking that question. As a follow-up, then, um, I think the last few games, maybe two total free throws. Uh, well, what do you think that is? Because there was a period you were getting to the line a lot. Is it just a matter of the calls, or is it uh, what you're choosing to pick apart in the defense? 
It's a little bit of everything. Um, I think a lot of it too is uh, throughout the flow of the game, either we're we're on a roll and we're you know getting whatever shot we want um, and finding space, or we're getting blown out. <laughs> it's kind of the opposite. So I think it's a it's kind of a weird vibe in terms of something I'm not really worried about, but I do know it getting easy points because I can make free throws, get into the line will will help us at times and settle us down if you know the other team gets on a run or even closing, you know, games in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, trying to get to the line to uh get easy points. So it'll it'll I'm focused on it, but I'm not worried about it at the same time. We've talked plenty, you know, about kind of your guys inconsistency this year but you are seven and one against uh, below 500 teams it, is that something you're seeing in this team that you guys do tend to kind of handle business on those nights that you're favored who was the one Knicks oh, I thought they were playing like they were above 500 uh, 11 now I think they might have been uh, about when we play it, it, you always know you got to uh they say win the games that you're supposed to win and um that's helped us, you know, cure some of the the bad vibes coming off of tough losses. Um, and we've had a pretty tough schedule early, so I think the the test is the, the test that we've had, especially against the Clippers and Trailblazers back on that homestand and um, bouncing back from tough losses and winning those games against tough teams. Obviously, taking our lumps against some other good teams. We've had some really good wins. We've had literally every experience. But to your point and to your question, winning those games that you know whether you're at home or the road that you're quote unquote supposed to win gets you in a position where you're 11 and 9 not feeling like you're playing anywhere near your best basketball and you know you're a couple you know two three game win streak away from really being in really good shape so um that does that does help uh Steph pre-game we we're talking to Steve about the lack of consistency in league right now I mean there's maybe a handful of teams that have been consistent and he said it might have to do with the outer basketball world. I mean, people don't have consistency on their day to life. I mean, kids don't go to school. You can't see your friends. You can't go out, have a normal life. Uh, do you see that having an effect on this team? I mean, everybody has their own experience and how you would answer that question. I think for um, what I've noticed is just there's, you know, you're here at the facility for a lot longer. There's all the different protocols and stuff. Uh, like you said, there aren't really many distractions outside of, you know, basketball. Um, a lot of the way that you used to move out, you know, in between games and practices and then your normal social life, like everybody else in the world, has been interrupted. So, um, yeah, it, it might have something to do with the, uh, the, the mood swings, if you will. But, um, you know, as we go through the season, it's going to challenge you mentally uh, more than anything to – to keep your focus, I think we Draymond mentioned earth and shoot around this morning. There's a lot of things that you have to worry about on top of being a great basketball player on the floor, and mentally that can be draining. And it's it's our experience, and there's a lot of people that are going through a lot worse things. But it is a challenge in terms of what we're used to doing, you know, in uh, in our craft. So gotta understand, uh, be open about it, talk about it, and then, you know, understand it's a long season, got to find a way to, to stay sharp through it all. Steph, in your post-game interview with Clay, um, you guys' relationship, I mean, you just play off each other, play with each other. How have you guys been able to maintain that relationship without getting tired of each other after 10 years? <laughs> It's a great question. I think a lot of it's just our personalities. I think we really love the game. We love and appreciate what we both, uh, Draymond and Kuda, what we all bring to the equation, how different we all are. But we have the same common goal of just trying to win. And we've all found an identity in that and appreciation of just who we are as people, too. So I think it all kind of blends in together. We do get sick of each other at times. and. You know, it's nice to get away and all that normal, healthy relationship type of stuff. But at the end of the day, um, that's the chemistry that we built, and you know, the, the identity that we built uh, over the those those many years. And when you win at the highest level, obviously, it it only gets stronger. So, um, 
yeah, I feel blessed to obviously have that that vibe and, and obviously bring other guys into the to the fold um, that can kind of live that out too. So it's it's pretty awesome. How would you de describe Clay's sense of humor? How would you describe Clay's sense of humor? Uh, it's always on, but I don't think he knows how funny he is. So that's the best part about it. It's just, uh, it's just who he is. He's not even trying. So, uh, that's what we like about it.